Hello YouTube world, V Gates. My name is Monica Liana and you are here with me with Books and Beauty. I'll be talking about books while doing my makeup. I'm gonna do a January wrap up of everything that I have consumed. Mainly it's thrillers. I have a few literary fictions and then I have three memoirs and everything like that. Uh, I'll be going through my star rating the synopsis and kind of what I liked and didn't like about it. We'll go through it kind of quickly, at least as quickly as I humanly possible could do. If at any point you hear the tyrant of a Chewini, that is Emery and Ava, they rule this apartment complex with an iron fist. So if you hear them, don't mind them. They're upset that somebody walked by the house without a permit. But anyways, let's go on. So I'm gonna start with Mine by J.L. Butler. This one I gave a three star rating. And the reason is because it started off good and then got boring. But basically the synopsis is a female lawyer, divorce lawyer, gets with this male uh, client to help him get a divorce by his wife, obviously. And you know, He's rich, like they always are, and she all of a sudden, while in the middle of the proceedings of like, you know, who gets what, she kind of goes missing. So it starts to become slightly suspicious of like, where did she go? Like, did he have something to do with it? You know, what happened? And then also the female lawyer and the client get together. So, you know, they have kind of a inappropriate affair going on while at the same time she's questioning whether or not he actually killed her even though she's saying oh he couldn't have done it but then also questioning like well maybe he did which i mean if you're wondering if your man is killing somebody that may not be the person you want to be with next one is the wrong family by taryn fisher we should all know how i feel about this one i gave this a three mainly because it was entertaining it's not good it's a chaotic mess but it is very entertaining so i don't hate it i just more or less of like you'll have to see I, I made a video of this so you'll have to see why i think it's such a mess but it's a trip and i know gravy reads is like doing this as her book uh for february and i'm so excited to see what she has to say because i want to see the trash talk because yeah i just want to see the trash talk so badly i will be there uh the next one is the snow mine by joe nesber nesber this one i thought i would, was going to love this one i gave it a three i thought i was going to love this one mainly because i like detective stories like i I know a lot of people really don't like detective stories. I do. I like detective stories. I like uh, fucked up kind of cases and everything like that. And I feel like it's kind of my fault of why I only giving this one as a three star rating is because I kept putting it down, which was not a good thing because with detective stories, there's a lot of uh, legal jargon and just you're dealing with a lot of people. You're there's a lot of characters because you know you go in here you're investigating this and you're talking to this person and then you're backtracking and so me putting it down I kept having to remember what was going on and who was who so that was my fault but basically the synopsis is there are snowmans being uh, made in front of people's houses which indicate that the man the snowman hit which is a killer serial killer he's chopping up bodies he's putting uh people into snowmans at one point spoiler at one point he puts a carrot in somebody's nose like and makes them into the snowman the book is way better than the movie the movie is garbage i watched the movie afterwards i knew i heard it was going to be garbage but i still had to watch it i had to i was like i'm curious i want to see it it's garbage. It's little garbage. Do not waste your money. I wasted $2 to watch it. And I'm highly upset because it was nothing even like the book. 
not at all they changed like three different things and had you not read the book you wouldn't have even known what was going on in the movie it was terrible <laughs> so the next one is shipped by angie hackman hackman this one was cute it was basically a love to hate situation with two co-workers they have to work together they're competing for a promotion and basically it's kind of a misunderstanding she thinks they both think each other hate each other and then it turns out what they thought wasn't actually what it is and by the end of this cruise that they have to go on because they're kind of into advertisement and stuff like that so they have to go on this cruise to kind of show the company of like how they can improve it how they can make the advertisement better blah 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 and by the end of it you know they in love and i don't feel like that's a spoiler because obviously it's a it's a romance book they don't get together it's just along the way is what you find out like why they didn't like each other why now they like each other and everything in between it was super cute i gave that one a four just because it was cute like there's really not much to it it's either it was good or it wasn't like romance books entertaining or not like i don't really get nitty gritty on like the details because I feel like romance are pretty cut and dry of what they are. It's just whether or not it was entertaining or not. The next one is The House Swap by Rebecca Fleet. I gave this one. I did not like this book. The synopsis sounded good. Basically, a woman goes in, goes to kind of like an Airbnb. She has her and her husband are trying to fix their marriage because she had a, uh, an affair. And then weird things start happening. I got so bored after a while. I'm sorry. Sorry to whoever liked this book, but I did that. I thought it was so boring after a while. I could not, I couldn't. I got to a point where, cause I do this sometimes. I know this is bad, but I skip. I started skipping and trying to just get to the end. And the conclusion wasn't even satisfying. Sometimes the conclusion is least like I, least it's satisfying. Uh, it wasn't. I highly recommend you skip this one because it wasn't good. Like, it wasn't. Waste the time. The Red Hunter by Lisa Unger. This was a two. The synopsis is this woman had something happened to her when she was younger that kind of made her into an orphan. You find out what happened. And she decides to get revenge on the people that caused this issue. And she finds out, she kind of ends up finding out about her parents and that like her parents were possibly not the best people as she thought they were. Cause you know, you always think your parents are great. Nothing could ever make them into a bad person. And then you come to a realization that like, nah, they did something bad too. They're human. And that's basically the, the uh, the book and it was pretty boring and like i said same thing the ending was just like okay cool like move on the next one the push by ashley ombre this was a three it was basically about a lady who has a child and you uh, at least how i took it is you're kind of wondering whether or not she's actually being mean to her child or if her child is actually somewhat has mental issues because she thinks her child is kind of a bad person even though her child is young she's like she really has this feeling of like i think my child is purposely doing bad things but then in front of everybody else, she's just a child. So her husband is just assuming like, nah, it's just you. You're not being a good mother. Like maybe if you actually like loved her, she wouldn't be supposedly quote unquote acting bad because she didn't act bad with me and stuff like that. And she, she does question, she's like, am I just a bad mom? Cause her mother was a bad mother. So she's like, maybe I'm just like my mom and like maybe i wasn't supposed to have children and then she ends up having a son and that's when she feels the motherly love like she loves her son and she's just like 
yeah, this is what everybody is talking about. So you start to wonder, like, is she just a bad mom? Or is her child actually a bad child in the sense of, like, she's a psychopath? I think that's what the terminology they use. Don't quote me on that, but I think she really thinks, like, yeah, something is wrong with my child. It's not me. Uh, the next one is The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. This one I like. This one is a four. I wouldn't say five just because I feel like eventually I'll probably forget about that one. So I don't want to put it as a five verse like the audition or confessions or something like that. That will be five because I will forever like think about these. This book was a four though because it was very entertaining. So a lady lawyer defends her husband because he's he had an affair and a woman that he had an affair with t ends up dead and even though of course she's upset with the fact that he had an affair she believes that he didn't do it and it's a classic whole well did he do it did he not do it you know you're finding out stuff and it's kind of a legal legal thriller which I personally love. I love legal thrillers. And that's pretty much what it is. It's like, there's not really much synopsis I can give you. It's just more of a wife, husband, try to figure out whether or not he did it, he didn't do it. And then of course you find out at the end. And I had a great time. I, and I think this is this author's debut uh, book. Great. I would love to see what else they do. Uh, the next one is The Insect Farm by Stuart Preble. This one is a, I guess, I'm assuming it's like literary fiction or something like that. I don't really know what genre it's from. I got recommended this book because, uh, like, from the audition and confessions, there's certain books that, like, you know, get recommended. And this was one that I kept seeing, like, constantly. And... I like this book in this it was a three okay it was a three I like this book but I don't think it's what it made out to be it made out to be this kind of creepy book and it's not creepy it's actually just more or less just kind of sad so uh a brother there's two there's two uh brothers one of them has a mental issue to the point where he, you know, he's mentally handicapped. <clears throat> and he has an insect farm like this. He loves this insect farm. Like that's like his joy in life. Well, his parents die supposedly in suspicious, you know, in a suspicious way. It's a house fire, but they wonder whether or not the brother did it and stuff like that. The, of course, the, the other brother that takes care of him takes him into his house and stuff like that. Doesn't believe it, but it's like a whole, did he do it? Did he not do it? Is he Does he understand more than he's letting on? Like, that's the whole thing. It's like, you start to wonder whether or not he understands a lot more than, like, he lets on. Because he lets certain things slip that you're just like, wait a minute, what? It's like, and, you know, that whole thing of, like, you know does he just know more and is he slightly sadistic which is where i think the book try to make it seem it try to make it seem like this is a horror book if you read the synopsis it's not a horror book it's more or less of kind of just a sad story of this man's life and what happened and what uh, what he thought happened what actually happened that's pretty much what this book is but it's actually pretty good like i had a good time it was very entertaining uh the next one is the butterfly house by katrine imberg i believe that's how you pronounce the name this one was a three like i said i like detective books but i guess i'm not doing the greatest with uh choosing them lately because this one i thought was more or less just okay it wasn't anything special and this one is about a mental hospital that got shut down this is like years like but it was like a mental hospital that took care of like people that have depression or mental issues or just dealing in general and it got shut down for the possibility that they weren't doing the best with people like 
one girl she ends up killing herself after being there so it's like well did you really take care of her did you not like she seemed to be actually doing better when she came home to visit and then as soon as she came back into your care is when she deteriorated and ended up <coughs> committing suicide so this place got shut down it's been years and all of a sudden people that were involved with this hospital end up dying like uh you know being killed and stuff like that so basically this book is about these detectives trying to figure out who is killing off these people and what happened at this butterfly hospital that warrants these people being killed like that's the whole thing and like i said i don't think it was bad i did technically like the story but I don't know I feel like maybe there was just moments that it just kind of dragged on that it was just not as like gripping as of a detective story than I like because for example if you've ever read the Will Trent series I like those all of those are great all those stories are really dark and they're very fast paced and I like Will Trent so I think that may be why like I like those and then these ones are more or less like they're okay but you know i feel like they're slow at times and then also maybe i just don't know these characters because i feel like if you read detective stuff you have to like the characters most of the times i don't care about the characters for the most part i don't care if i like them or not as long as the story is good but i feel like detective stuff you have to like the characters. so if you're not with them it makes it a little harder i mean that's just my opinion but i think that's why sometimes i don't like detective stuff is because if i just don't like the detective it kind of like doesn't add anything to it <clears throat> the next one is uh the wife upstairs by rachel hawkins this one was a three i consider this just a generic domestic thriller i like domestic thrillers do not get me wrong but at the same time you start to read a lot of them and they start to mesh and it takes a good amount of effort for it to really get to the point of like this is better than the rest and i feel like that's just more or less of what this is this woman she's kind of a con artist she likes to uh steal stuff she's a kleptomaniac and she's also a dog walker and she meets this man that got money that she would like to be a part of. And they get into a relationship and you find out that his wife died under suspicious circumstances. And it kind of goes from there. They get into a relationship super quick, which is like, yeah, that's life. You get into a relationship after a week of knowing each other and move into the house. That's what happens. <clears throat> and this guy is rich of course they're always rich can we just not have a rich person because like you know what we're not all rich but this guy is rich you know go into the house there's you know instant love and she's now she she's running away from a situation which you find out and <laughs> it's not that big of a deal but she's running away from a situation <clears throat> and yeah and then you kind of wonder whether or not he did something to his wife generic domestic thriller like i said i don't have a problem with uh domestic thrillers i consider them trash tv like domestic thrillers 100 percent trash tv so, and i don't have a problem with trash tv it's just some are better than others like i guess this is just the best way to explain it some are better than others and this one was just okay uh the next one is save and megan by jay palmer I like this one. This is a four. This is a kind of legal thriller. No, I meant medical thriller, not, not legal thriller. Is, you know, making her child sick. And that's basically the synopsis. It's like, is she making her sick? Is she not making her sick? It very is. The, the author does a good, good enough job to actually make you wonder. Like, I feel like there's never a moment of like, I know exactly like, yes, she's making her sick or no, she's not making her sick. I feel like there is a moment of like, well, she could be and she's not realizing it or maybe she's not and something is actually going on because the doctors can't figure out what the hell's going on with her child. So it does beg the question of like, well, she probably is making her sick then. 
<clears throat> and the next one is the spare room by Derba Deborah Derba Mitchell. This was a one I should have just freaking DNF this book. I have a problem with wanting to just at least know the ending. I get to a certain point and I need to know the ending. Like I need to. Like it's annoying. So I don't really DNF books. I at some point will just skip through and just try to find the ending. And this book, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to shit on it. But you got this lady who goes to this house as a... So this couple puts up their spare bedroom to rent. That's the whole thing. <clears throat> she goes to go to this lady rents the house or the spare bedroom and she starts trying to find stuff in the room she finds stuff in the room of this guy that left the suicide note and then you start to wonder like oh did the owners know this guy like what does he have to do with anything she has bad nightmares she says that this house is connected to this bad nightmares which is like how do you know this and then you find out that she she purposely sought out this house and the reason she sought out this house is because she had she's been having bad nightmares her whole life about supposedly something that happened in this house her parents are like what the hell are you talking about you never lived in this house like just drop it like you're you know you're you're going crazy she's been in a hospital like she's rambling she got all these scars on her body and the reason she has these scars on her body is because she got into an accident when she was younger but shit she doesn't remember it <clears throat> she doesn't believe her family she's just very fixated about this freaking house and it is so boring it's so boring and then the conclusion i mean i guess the conclusion was somewhat satisfying but at the same time it was just like there was so much filler that had the author cut this in half it would have been better like i know i'm getting like heated but i'm like i'm serious i think chapters like a few chapters i straight up skipped and i don't think i feel like i missed anything i didn't miss anything so take it for what you will this book was not the greatest it sounded interesting enough but man, I should have DNF'd it because it was a waste of time. The last one was Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. This was the book I actually, the first book I actually consumed um, <clears throat> as of uh, 2021. And this book was just okay. It was a three. Like, I feel bad because I feel like there's nothing but threes on this book. But it's the same thing. Wife wants to leave her husband. He supposedly is abusive and she kills him but then he comes back and she's like nervous she's like oh my god i'm gonna go to jail and there's like some type of an investigation going on and then yeah you just kind of go from there it's like another domestic thriller of a husband and a wife having an issue is the husband bad is she not bad is she crazy is she not crazy like that's basically what it was I do think the ending was kind of cool in the sense of like it was kind of fucked up like the ending conclusion of like you figure out you know how you always the reveal was fucked up I will give it that but I feel like in a way if they were gonna go that dark for the ending they should have went dark the whole entire time because the ending is dark like very much the ending is very dark of an ending you might as well have went dark the whole entire time because in a way it almost seems like you whipped that out your ass like where did that come from i'm just saying you could have just went dark the whole time and it probably would have been a better book but this was a very domestic thriller that you feel you felt like making shocking at the end and i wasn't like i said it's fine whatever cool I don't think it was a bad book it was just more of a I will probably never think about this really again last three books are memoirs I'm not gonna write these because 
I would not make rape somebody's life. Like, nah. And they're all about cults. I have gone down a rabbit hole of uh, cults and uh, polygamy cults. Those are the ones. They fascinate me. I want to hear more. Like, I'm probably going to get a few more books because I'm like, I need to hear more. The first one was The Sound of Gravel. This one, <clears throat> this one was about a girl who her mother was married. Like, her dad got killed by the Mormon Mafia. Or, like, the Mormon Manson is what they called him. I looked it up it's a real thing i was like that's interesting and then she since her husband got killed she ended up getting married to this other guy and he was a piece of shit like 100 percent piece of shit they lived in squirrel she had like baby after baby and basically the husband didn't give a damn about them they didn't have like no plumbing they didn't have like anything it was like sad and then like at one point they get plumbing and she the mother because she's on welfare because you know, she's not legally married to this guy so she can collect welfare and whatnot and she get asked him to give you know when you go back out get a shower head for us he gives a shower head to his other wife and she's just like uh excuse me that was my money like we need a shower head and he was like nah you don't need a shower head. you'll get a shower head when i tell you you're gonna get a shower head and the mother's like no like go get it from her like that's my money like <laughs> you know i asked to get it like these kids need a shower and he's just like nah fuck you like she's the first wife she needed one before you and it was just sad because he really treated her like shit granted the mother was abused but at the same time it was just sad because like she allowed things to happen over and over again and basically was just kind of like telling the kids like you know well he's an okay guy he's sorry you know he'll do better and just over and over again it the sound of gravel i'm telling you out of the three i'm about to talk about the other ones this is the one that like i feel like was personally the best and i'm not meaning like her like this it was just the book was better in the sense of like i was just so engaged it was so sad <clears throat> and so crazy and like you just want to like punch the husband so badly and you want to punch the organization so badly because you know polygamy and the whole religious stuff and everything they have their faults Granted, if you're a plugmist, I'm not saying that you are a bad person, but that father, yeah, he was a bad person. He was an asshole. And, uh, spoiler, he dies, but he dies in a car accident. And I don't think that should have been the way he went. He should have went a different way. Just, just saying, because he, he fucking got lucked out. He should have died a different way. But moving on, uh, the polygamist daughter. This was the one that I read after The Sound of Gravel. And it's funny because this was the daughter of the Mormon Manson. So I kind of got to hear about two different daughters from two different like, you know, spiritual leaders. And this one was different because even though the first girl, she, yeah, they moved around and everything, but there wasn't like a, there wasn't anybody coming after them with the polygamous daughter they were constantly moving because they were trying to get away from like uh the cops people were uh, uh doing hits on them like they were moving for like their lives and stuff like that and like whether or not you know cps would take their kids because you know this this organization was putting hits on people they were killing people people that were going against them which like that is that was interesting in the sense of like you being a kid and not knowing anything and you're thinking that like oh if the cops talk to you you don't tell them how like if you know anybody like they were basically made to like they don't know their parents name no nothing it was like you don't say anything <clears throat> and they were trained this at like a young age so being on the run because of the fact that you know the cops are after you or these people are gonna kill you 
a little bit different it was it was definitely a different story and it was just kind of funny because i didn't realize that i was like i'm basically listening to the daughter that killed the first daughter's dad it was like okay and the last one was the witness wore who wore red this is from the wife of the prophet like it talks about when she was younger and it's uh warren jeff's she uh if you guys know about that one warren jeff was an awful garbage human being well it basically talked about him and his dad the prophet which i forgot what the hell his name was but like she was one of the many wives and once the prophet died warren took over and was just a garbage person and it basically talked about how she escaped that and <clears throat> testified and everything and this is the one that i remember seeing on the news like where they kind of raided the compound and all these like girls and stuff like that were taken away by cps and stuff like that and i don't remember what comic but i remember there was a comedian that made a joke about them talking about house on the prairies i remember this i don't remember who said it but yeah so i got a little content of like what happened because i'm like i remember seeing this on the news but like i didn't know nothing of it and i was like no it was a religious organization that basically a tyrant got a hold of and just started abusing young kids in the name of the lord which is like how do you can come to that conclusion i'm so confused how is preparing a bed with altars around it so the woman can satisfy you so she could praise the Lord. I'm confused. Make it make sense. You can, but I'm just saying, make it make sense because it doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> but those are the books that I consumed this uh, month. I feel like in a way it was okay. Like I, there was nothing on this. Other than the cult stuff, there's nothing on this that necessarily were the best. It like yeah i don't know i kind of almost got into a reading slump this month because of the stuff that i just hated like i did not like the spare room and the house swap and i just remember when while reading that and finishing them it was just like do i really want to start another thing and then just not like it it makes it, you get very nervous reading the next thing you're like am i gonna am i about to waste my time like I know that's how probably a lot of people feel it's like once you read a bad one it's kind of just like ooh, do I want to consume something else and then hate it and then really get into the reading slump but and that's why I started doing the memoirs like once I consumed the one that I really liked the the gravel one I was like I'm just gonna kind of keep going with this because this is what I'm interested in so I'll probably do a few more before I get back into thrillers because I love thrillers but it's like after a while once you start reading some generic or just bad ones in general you start to get to a point where you're like i need to take a break <laughs> i need to take a break but anyways uh if you like this video hit subscribe like everything you do on youtube you have a good day uh chus i'll see you next time bye